Welcome to Zion City Gate Church International YouTube channel. We are happy to have you join us today. You are more than welcome to join us at any of our physical locations. Make sure you subscribe to stay blessed with new videos. Get ready as we are about to partake of the glory of God. We love you. Stay blessed. I believe that this word will help someone. Especially in the place of our relationship and how God responds to us. Many times we talk about how God is mindful of us. Sometimes we talk about how God responds to us. And it's a great thing for us to know that God is mindful of us and God is always ready to respond to us. But for the few years I have walked with God and I have seen how God moves and how God works. I have come into a very strong conclusion that God does not respond at the same level to every man. And this is a reality that some of us, by omission or commission, tries to deny. But the fact is, God does not respond to us at the same rate and at the same level. Somebody can open his mouth here to pray and the whole of heaven will pay attention to that man praying. And somebody else can open his mouth to pray and nothing happens after the prayer. It is clear that there are people when they declare a word, God never permits that word to fall on the ground. And it's clear there are people who keep declaring words and nothing happens. Yet, it is the same God we serve. Yet, it is the same anointing, the same grace. I took time to observe this particular event. I took time to really understand what's going on. Now, I need to share some things with you that will help you understand why God Responds to people in different levels. And this message is for those who really want to break through the barrier. There is a reason God will back a man. And there is a reason it will look as if God is not backing another man. Though they be believers. Yet one can command an unusual presence of God and the other one seems to be struggling to make it. Yet, they pray. I have realized that the things of God are so easy to assess. But they are as easy as we are willing to understand the principles that guides it and to respond to those principles. And this is something that my prayer for everyone here is that we capture the revelation so we know how to command the full attention of heaven. Even when you look at the scriptures, you will see that there are people they called uh, special, you know, they use words like major or minor. Not necessarily in line with God, but how God responded to men. How can somebody stay in a place of prayer? Sometimes add fasting to it. 
yet they come out without any tangible response from God. It looks as if the man is just struggling from here to there. And today, I believe we are going to get some things done so that some of us can really receive the keys to assessing the manifest presence of God. Now, the first thing I want you to understand is this. If you really desire to know what God responds to, if you truly desire to capture that picture of what God really cares about, then the first thing we must study critically is his response when he was asked, teach us how to pray. At some point, the disciples, after watching him do all manner of miracles, do all manner of signs and wonders, they said there is something about this man that we need to find the system. There is a system he follows that produces such a result. And they went to him and said, Master, please teach us how to pray. Teach us how to pray. And the first thing he said, our father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Now, when he said our father, that is you recognizing God as your father. Hallowed be thy name is a place of worship. You need to put God in a place where he deserves. But just much more than that, the next two statements he made, carries the key to attracting divine attention. He said, let thy will be done. But before he said that, he said, thy kingdom come and thy will be done on earth. Can I tell you the truth? What God is most passionate about is to see his kingdom established on earth and to his, see his will done on earth. It means for you to see God manifest in a particular thing, that thing must be establishing his kingdom and that thing must be exerting his will in that place at any point in time. Understanding these two statements will help you Know and see clearly where God will keep backing some men. And it looks as if he's ignoring some men. Maybe because these men have come to understand that there is a place of knowledge you come when you make yourself a vessel for the kingdom come principle. When you have become a vessel to establish the will of God on earth, then God says, yes, I found a man that I can pay maximum attention on for maximum results. I will give you some instances. Now, let me give you an instance. In Let me come down to today's world. Let me say that we, we have two couples. And one couple came together and said, we know we have... Uh, we have, you know, a call of God upon our lives. God has called us to... Go into nations and win souls. Therefore, as we are going in this relationship, make sure you know that once we get married, we need to fulfill God's purpose in our lives. And then the two, are, the other two, are busy discussing and saying, "Ah, we, you know, uh, we need to make it. Or we need to buy cars. We need to buy houses. We need, we need to show people that things will work." Now, let me tell you the truth. If you ask yourself a question, which relationship will command more of God's attention. It is clear that what God will back most is the relationship that establishes his will and his kingdom. God does not joke with anything that has his kingdom as a primary motivation. And that's why God can move in this place right now. The primary person God is looking for is somebody that has aligned him or herself to his kingdom purpose. 
He's a man that will start a business and say, Father, as I do this business, 40% of it will go into your kingdom. Because I've come to realize that your word said by prosperity is the kingdom shed abroad. Therefore, anything I get from this business, 40% of them will go to you. And another man is busy thinking how the prophet will come. And then he will build a house and carry all the women around. I wonder the one you know will attract the presence of God. I wonder the one. It doesn't matter the prayer prayed. If the purpose does not reflect the kingdom, there is nothing you can do from heaven to earth that will completely attract the attention of heaven into that business. Please, I want you to hear me. Because many times we question things. It looks as if God chooses just one person and say, this one is the one I'm going to bless. Everybody else struggle. Before you complain that your life is in a mess, ask yourself, what purpose in my life establishes, helps to establish the passion of God on earth? What purpose in my life can God hold on and say, this is the purpose I have for him? Please, there is nothing wrong in having your desire. It is good to have desires to go to Canada, to go to U.S. It's good to have a desire to own this, own that, to run your own company, to run this, to run that. It is good to have desires to finish school and to do this one and to do this one. Those desires are great, but much more than that, if the purpose and the kingdom come of God is not found in that desire, I want to assure you that heaven is not bound to back it up fully. And that's why we have many dreamers, but we have few people that God is backing the dream. Because if you are looking for the kingdom principles, kingdom assignment, kingdom purpose in it, you can't find anything there. It's just men trying to please themselves and trying to outwit themselves. Please, I hope this message is not too deep for you. But there is a question we must ask ourselves. There is a question we must ask ourselves. Very important question. The thing is, I have a plan. You have a plan. But is there God in that plan? I called some few guys, around 23 of them, and I called them together, and I told them, please come, my brothers and my sisters. I'm going to pray, lay hands on every one of you for you to prosper financially because that, I knew that was the only way they would come for that meeting. And they came for that meeting, and I sat them down, and I said, I want to admonish you how God prospers his own. Now, we, we need to understand this because many will continue to struggle if we don't capture how God functions in this kingdom. A woman came to Jesus and said to Jesus, please permit that my two sons, one will sit at your left, one will sit at your right. Jesus said, no, it's not my place to determine who will sit at my left or my right. Even Jesus looked at John the Baptist and said, ah, the one that is least in the kingdom is greater than he. It means that when it comes to the kingdom of God, there are greater authorities and greater anointing. Men are not always the same in the kingdom. That's why a man can enter your family. Something you guys have prayed for 10 years and declare a word in one second and that is issue is over. It's never the same. God never responds to people at the same level. It never happens. It wouldn't matter how much all night prayer you make, but there is something God always looks out for that proves the faithfulness of any man, how much you are committed to his kingdom come. There is nothing God will not put in your hands when God can be sure that if he gives you anything, it will not derail you from his kingdom assignment. There is nothing he won't put in your hands. There is nothing he won't put in your hands. Because when we look at the parables of the kingdom, 
to apply the parables in today, if we look at the parable of the, of the prodigal son, we begin to understand the dangers of not being kingdom-minded in what even God gives to us. A son said, hey, give me what belongs to me. Make, make demand on the father. The father did not say, ah, well, you are making a demand and I'm, I can't give it to you. It was his right to make such demands because everything the father has got is his. He said, give me what belongs to me. And the father freely gave him what belongs to him. But what happened? Instead of to stay in the kingdom, he took it and went outside of the kingdom to spend it. And once you go outside of the kingdom, that means breaking principles of the kingdom. You will break also the supply to what you have. This is why God can bless so many people. Even some people here, after a while, they are down. Because once they receive the blessing, it is spent on kingdom dimensions. And immediately the supply ceases. And it looks as if we are going on a circle. But it's just a principle laid out in the scriptures. That once you make a demand of what belongs to you in this kingdom, you must realize how important it is to stay also under the kingdom. You can spend as much as you want, but may it be under the kingdom principle. May it be for the expansion of the kingdom and not for the building of another kingdom. He ran out of goods and was equal to a swine. Began to feed pigs. So many people are in lack here today because of this. Not understanding that everything God puts in your hands is for the establishment of his kingdom. That is the primary reason God would decide to lift you up. Very strange things. I pray something will change in our lives today. Because this place is very calm now. There was a man in the scriptures that I need to talk to you about. Now, somebody will say, okay, man of God, how do I know that this is the will of God? Let thy will be done. Anything that will promote the kingdom is the will of God. Anything that will promote the kingdom is the will of God. It means for everything that you are involved in, you have to first ask yourself, how does this expand the kingdom of God? Not for anything, but for your own good. For you to be able to attract the full attention of heaven. It is a question you must ask yourself. How does this establish the kingdom? If not, there are things God won't pay attention to. You know, there are places in the scriptures that we must read and read it again, read it again until we understand exactly what God is saying there. You know where the Bible says, eyes have not seen, ears have not heard, neither has he entered into the heart of men. The things God has prepared for those that what? That love him, not for those he loves. God loves everybody. But there are special things God prepared for those that love him. That means those that will respond to his love. Those that will respond to his kingdom. There are special dimensional blessings. That's why a man can be blessed and really be blessed. And you are shocked. How is this man blessed like this? Why? Why? You can find out by observing how committed that man's life is to the kingdom purpose. Everybody won't be a preacher, but everybody has a part to play. Everybody won't be a preacher. So everything that is in the will of God. You know, there is something that shocked me in the scriptures. When I studied the lifestyle of David, 
and they realized that God said, testified, that God gave a testimony over his life and said, this is a man unto my own heart. I said, why would God call a man like David a man unto my own heart? By the reason of morals, I mean, he stands no chance. If David is to exist today and he's a pastor, nobody will be going to his church. By the reason of our standards, a man that saw another man's wife taking his bath looked at his, say, my goodness, killed the husband and took the wife. Yet at the end of the day, God himself said, this is a man after my heart. That statement worried me spiritually for years. I'm telling you the truth. Because from every standard and yastic, that should be the least person. God should give such a testimony. And I said one day, I said to God, Father, can you show me really why? Because God does not just talk. There must be something provoking him for him to speak. Say that. I said, show me. And I understand. When I, when I told him to show me, I said to him, don't show me in the Old Testament. Show me in the New. Something must show, must exhibit why God will call such a man, a man unto my heart. Until one day I was reading the book of Acts. Acts chapter 13 verse 22. If you go to Acts 13 verse 22. He said, and when he had removed him. Talking about Saul. He raised up unto them David to be their king. To whom also he gave testimony and said, I have found David, the son of Jesse. A man after my own heart, which shall what? Fulfill what? So the reason he called him what? A man after my own heart is what? He was there. He was, David was committed to kingdom come. He had his weaknesses. He made his mistakes. But in the midst of the mistakes, he was a man who was determined to fulfill the kingdom assignment put on, on, upon his life. And he commanded divine attention. Not minding that he was a messed person by physical standard. He said, this man here, I'm testifying of, is ready to fulfill all my will. Let me tell you the truth. Each and every one of us will come to that point in our lives where we have to make up our mind. Either my will or God's will. Jesus was there at Gethsemane, Garden of Gethsemane, and the, the trouble of going to the cross hit him. The Bible said that his sweat was like a blood dripping from him. And he said, Father, let this cup pass over me. But he switched the prayer immediately. He said, not my will, but let your will be done. Jesus understood the importance of fulfilling kingdom come. Even him faced the challenge. Of not fulfilling his kingdom assignment. Friends. Hmm. Mm. I want us to understand something now. God does not just walk around. Giving everybody maximum attention. That you are alive today means he has already given you the attention you need. But there are some levels of dimensional attraction of heaven you will command. When you align your life to God's purpose for your life. Quit making decisions, your own decisions. Everything you must make the decision. Whether they be good or bad for you, it is my life. You hear people say that. Even sometimes when you want to cancel people, they say, but size it's my life. And you are complaining that you're that life. 
Nothing is working. The reason I'm, I believe God is saying this word to us is God really want to use you to showcase. But the truth of the matter is that there's, there is much God can do. There is much God can do. If him blessing this brother now and the next day this brother is calling all the parties in North Cyprus. He's the one hosting it. Everybody's doing hey, hey. Something God gave to you. Now the kingdom you are using to establish with God's blessing is another kingdom. It's a matter of time. You will come back to church humble. It's as simple as that. Please. It is time for us to ask ourselves. Am I in line with God's will for my life? Let us tell ourselves the truth. Already, some of us are outside of that will. Do you know why? Some of us would have, should have been in Nigeria. We shouldn't have even traveled in the first, first place. But we must study abroad. Some of us are reading all the professional courses. Probably we should be le learning tailoring. It's only abroad. We call it, they call them fashion designers. In Africa, they call them tailor. To downgrade the thing. In Africa, they call it taxi man. To downgrade it. But sometimes... God could be leading you into something because that is how he wants your life to flow. But there's just one thing I always love God about. God will not allow you to be in a place, even if that place is a wrong place. He won't allow you to be there except God knows that he can build a bridge from there to where you need to be. So probably you are in a wrong place. God will build a bridge for you in the name of Jesus. But we need to ask the first question. Now, let me say this. Just want to show this. Um, go to First John chapter 5. 1 John chapter 5 and verse 14. He said, this is the confidence that we have in him that if we ask anything according to what? According to what? He what? He heareth us. And if we know that he hears us, whatsoever we ask, we know that we have the petition that we have desired of him. If you ask according to his will, it will not matter if you spend all night asking for something that is outside of his will. So before you spend five hours in prayer, ask God first, is this my will, your will? And what is his will? His will is anything that establishes the kingdom. You go to God and say, Father, visit my finances. But be wise enough to say to him, Father, as I receive these finances, I will use part of it for the kingdom purpose. That is you trying to, but you are not saying that to bribe God because God knows your heart. Because some of you think, <laughs> okay, I'll go and tell God. You can't bribe God. Once he sees your heart. I met a young man, 22, in the U.S., a millionaire in, in dollars, an American, 22-year-old uh, uh, guy. And 
one of the questions I asked him, because when I see people who are, who have got something ahead, I said to them, teach me. And I said to, the, to him, how did you get here at 22? He laughed. He said, my system is unusual. And I said, tell me the system. He said, are you a believer? I said, you don't know who is talking to you. Because he doesn't know me. He, 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 you know, he just sees, he saw me in a, in a business conference. They announced him as 22-year-old, a millionaire. I said, ah. You know, if you see Oyibo, 22 millionaire. You know, it's only when they see a 22-year-old from Africa who is a millionaire, they will first of all say, how did he? And I say, ah. And he said to me, my dad taught me something. That the biggest way to attract kingdom prosperity is to have kingdom assignment even in the business you do. He said, I started off with 10%, but I kept increasing it, saying to God, Father, if you favor me, this motherless baby will get this, home will get this. This one will go to this one. He said, the more he committed his ways, the more he saw the blessings of God. I said, are you sure? He said, yes. I said, are you sure? He said, yes. I wrote it down, principle 10. Commit your business. And I've been working in that commitment. If I want to start something now, I say to God, Father, let's do an equation here. 40% is yours. 60 is mine. If I feel that he does not like it, I say, okay, 50-50. He said, come, let us reason together. Why? The scriptures made it clear. By prosperity is the kingdom shed abroad. Listen. This young man here can tell God that I'm giving you 20% from today. And God knows that this young man needs 20,000 tele for him alone to be able to make it and make good profit. You know what God will do? God will make sure he multiplies this young man that his profit will be much more than 20. So that when he removes the 20% for him, he will still have much more than enough. He said he anoints our head with oil and our cup. God never does anything. If it's not running over, it's not God. If that business is not running over, it's not God. There is anointing he places on you for run over. And I captured that principle and I said, Father, this young 22-year-old taught me a principle they don't write in books. Let me say this. Every time God sees the purpose of his kingdom. That's why he said to the disciples, do not ask for what you eat, what you drink, nor clothes you put on. This is not my system. He said the Gentiles follow this system. This is not the system of the kingdom. But look at my system. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And these things will be added. That is his system. You see, we see these things in the scriptures, yet we still, we just don't respond to them. We feel that God, Jesus made that statement. It doesn't matter, but it matters. In everything happening in your life now, which one is the kingdom? The day you got into a relationship, that was the last day you entered church. And then you wonder why at the end the relationship broke up and scattered. Because even God himself withdrew himself from it. Because as far as he's concerned, this one is not establishing any kingdom. He's trying to build another kingdom of his own. 
these are principles. I pray for everyone. People don't understand what is about to happen in the world today. There's going to be a mighty shift. A serious shift. He said the riches of the Gentiles are laid up for the just. And the just shall live by faith. There will be serious wealth transfer. But it's not coming on those who are not, not who, who don't have kingdom plans. It's coming on those who are already, they're already set. Saying, Father, if this thing comes now, I remember a church in Malawi that is struggling. Father, bless me so that that church will not struggle. The rector of EMU called us. We, I came. We sat down with students, uh, governing body from uh, Arab Emirates and all those stuff. You know, uh, he called, eh, they called everybody. And they said to us, um, the government said that if you can show us, if any of you can show us a proof that you have enough finances to build a church, a mosque, or a temple, or a monastery, whatever it is, the, the, govern, the government will give you a land. We need to see this amount of money. Everybody there said we are coming back. So he said to, they said to us, go. When you have the money, you come back. Two weeks later, I heard the ones for the Muslims showed already 250,000 pounds because they gave a call to a sheikh in Saudi Arabia who sent the money for us. We're just looking around. Till today. Till today. Are there not people who have been blessed? But till today, no kingdom since 1961 no new church has raised in this nation. And we are marking time. My prayer for everyone here is this. That we become genuine with God. This is my cry every day. It's not God is not poor. God is not poor. There is no lifting you cannot see in your life. But he's looking for those whose heart is for him. Those who can say, I know this has not established any kingdom in my life. I'm letting this go. People who are willing to trust him. I hope the message is not too hard. But God will see us through. God will see us through. Amen. Amen. All it takes is for us to die to ourselves and say, Father, let your will be done. Let your will be done. But it starts with the decision we start making. Personal decisions. I want us to pray. Before we pray, I'm going to be declaring some strange prayers here. I don't know if that brother is here. A brother wrote me, we did a declaration last week Sunday. And we spoke about anybody that said a word over your family that it will not be well with your family. We gave them 48 hours, right? Oh, many of you forgot the prayer. Oh my goodness. 
A brother shared a testimony with me. I don't know if he's here. Is he here? Is the brother here? Somebody shared a testimony online. Okay, he's not here. And we have other people that shared testimony. I don't know why we don't like um, sharing testimonies. Like somebody told me, sir, I won't share testimony because once I share testimony, all my friends will be knocking at my door. They will be knocking every day, sir, and be asking for one help or the other. So I cannot, I cannot come out in church, sir. Just let the testimony be here. And some of you are like that. Packaged blessings. Amen. But I thank God for testimonies. And as we declare again today, God will do awesome things in your life in the name of Jesus. I want you to bow down your head and say, Father, anything that does not align to your kingdom plan for me, may you take it away from my life in the name of Jesus. Open up your mouth and pray that prayer. Please pray from your heart. You need to attract God's attention, full attention. Just pray right now and say, Lord, anything in my life that will prevent you from responding to me fully, Father, separate me from them in the name of Jesus. Kadosh, Kadosh, you are mighty out your throne. Thank you, Jesus. You reign. You ancient Zion King, Kadosh, Kadosh, you are mighty on your throne. Say, Father, separate me from anything that will prevent your full attention in my life, the fullness of your grace in my life. Separate me from them in the name of Jesus. kingdom come and let your will be done in my life as it is in heaven there is already a plan for your life in heaven say Lord let your plan in heaven be established in my life right now it is God's plan for you to grow it is God's plan for you to prosper it is God's will for you not to be touched by any enemy it is God's will for you to be established in North Cyprus it is God's will for you to make it it's God's will for your business to explode it is God's will for you never to be sick I want you to open your mouth and say Lord let your will be done in my life let your will be done in my life open up your mouth and pray that prayer not my will, Lord. Let your will be done. Let your will be done in my business. Let your will be done in my finances. Everything I put in my hands to do. Let your will be done. Please open your mouth and pray that prayer. He has something better for you than you have for yourself. He has got a better relationship for you than you have for yourself. It is time to yield and say, Lord, not my will, but your will. Jesus came to that point. You need to come to that point where you say, Father, no more my will. Thank you for watching this video. Bless us with a like if you enjoyed this video and make sure you subscribe to stay connected to new videos. Zion City Gate Church, we love you. Stay blessed.